majority of believers who trade for a living. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and how we do it, call toll-free 1-866-928-3310. And we'll send you out a no-obligation information kit absolutely free. 866-928-3310. The CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast is now on Stitcher. Listen to us on your iPhone, Android phones, BlackBerry, and WebOS phone. Stitcher is smart radio for your phone. Find it in your app store or at Stitcher.com. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. You're listening to CFRN, the Christian Financial Radio Network. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download at www.audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Over 85,000 titles. Choose from mystery, romance, religion, science, technology, business, New York Times bestsellers, even children's books. You name it, Audible has it. With 85,000 titles to choose from, you're sure to find the perfect audiobook for yourself or to give as a gift, and it's absolutely free. Just point your browser to audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. That's audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. And become a part of the audiobook revolution by downloading your free audiobook today. Audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Hey, trader, want to get rich quick? Well, good luck with that. If, on the other hand, you actually want to learn how to trade, the place to be is www.cfrn.net. Tune in Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern, for our daily devotional, and then spend the next three hours learning how it's done from professional traders who actually trade for a living. That's www.cfrn.net. Every trading day from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. Good afternoon, traders, and welcome back to the CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast. This is the daily broadcast of Indeterminate Length, where we discuss all things E-Mini, along with some really big ideas on the finer points of trading gold, bonds, crude, sugar, the euro, and even T-bills. Joining us today from our studios in Boston, Mr. Michael Bork. From our trading desk in Chicago, Mr. Burton Schlichter. Now, to get things started, let's go to our host and founder in Studio A, overlooking South Mountain, America's largest city park. Here's Dwayne. Good afternoon. Welcome back. Today is Monday, 11th day of May. 2020. Thanks so much for joining us. Whoever you are, wherever you are, we're just glad to have you right here, right now. If you can't see the screen I have up, go to our homepage at CFRN.net. On the right-hand side of the page, click the big microphone, follow the instructions. You'll be registered in about 30 seconds, and that will give you one-click access to the show each and every day. On the days you're out of the office, away from the desktop, point any internet-connected browser to cfrn.net slash live. There you'll find a live, real-time simulcast of the show as it unfolds. Also, during the show each day, we stream live on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Let's open with a word of prayer. Father, we know that everything is in your sovereign control. Thank you for your mercy and for your grace. 
God, we ask that you keep this virus from continuing to spread. We pray that you would give government officials the ability to safely handle people. Those here in America, those arriving from other countries, Lord, help people decide to stay home instead of traveling or going out needlessly. But as we reopen the country, uh, we, we have to travel to our jobs. There are certain things that, that we have to do. But I pray, God, that we would do this with discipline and with patience. Let it unfold according to your will. And while it may be heartbreaking, comfort families as they continue to be separated from friends and family members, you are our refuge and our strength. You are God, our ever-present help in time of trouble. So based on your word, God, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the sea, we put our faith, our hope, and our trust in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, guys, let's take a look at a chart on this Monday. Let's jump over to the S&P daily chart, where we currently have a daily doji. Now, the uh, pandemic sell-off kicked into high gear on February 27th at a price of 32.72. That's based upon our way of measuring the market with our indicators. Uh, that took us to a swing low on March 23rd, and that swing low price is 21.74. If I draw fibs from the swing high to the swing low, you can see that we're sitting above the 50% retracements, just below the 62. Now, let me take those fibs off just to clear up the screen. The swing high that was put in on April 29th, we reached a high of 29.59.75. When price could not break through that resistance, Price went in search of support, which it found at the BBC. When we approach from below, we expect resistance like this. When we approach from above, we expect support like this and like this. So currently we sit between resistance and support. One of two things will happen. Yeah, one of three things perhaps. We'll overcome this resistance and the next area where we anticipate good resistance would be this previous swing high. That's one option. The second option, we pull back to the BBC. It holds as good support, which will send us back up to test this area of resistance once again. And then the third would be that we pull back to the BBC, it does not hold, and we then drop in search of support. We have potential support here. So potential for major support right here, the price where we actually had the bullish cross and recent price action has created this area for potential support and even this little area right here. So, I mean, those two are, you know, so close together that 
and you could just consider that one area. But what I'm highlighting is the swing low of this candle, the swing low of these two candles. Whenever you approach previous resistance, you anticipate it to be resistance until proven otherwise. And when you approach previous support, you anticipate it being support again until proven otherwise. That's the daily look. Let me give you the numbers from around the world, the cash markets, the indices as they're called, and see how the rest of the world is faring. Pull in some fresh data. All right, starting here at home. The Dow is currently down 150 points. The NASDAQ is up 39. S&P 500 is down seven. And the Russell 2000 is up 14. The only mover and shaker there uh, would be the Russell. That's a drop of a little over 1%. The NASDAQ, is the one market that's sort of bucking the trend in the indices. Typically the indices, the Dow, the NQ, S&P, Russell, they tend to travel as a pack in the same direction. Now there's no one particular market that always moves first. Uh, there's, there's not one particular uh, index that you can watch and when it starts to move then you could trade the others because you never know which one is going to move first this time. But today is unusual in that we're green on the NASDAQ by 39 points and uh, the other indexes are in the red. Again, the Dow down 150, S&P 500 down 7, and the Russell 2000 down 14. And the commodity basket, crude oil down 14 cents, trading 24.60 last. Gold down $17.10, trading 16.96.80 last. That's a drop of 17%. I'm sorry, we're down $17. That's a drop of almost 1%. In the Asian markets at the close, Nikkei posted a gain of 211 points, gain of 1%. The Shanghai dropped half a point, and the Hang Seng gained 371 points. That's a gain of 1.5%. And in the European markets at the close, FTSE was up three and three quarter points. The DAX was down 79. The CAC was down 59. And the only mover and shaker in the European markets was the CAC. That's a drop of a little over one and a quarter percent. In the Asian markets, the mover and shaker there, well, we had two, the Nikkei up a little over 1% and the Hang Seng up a little over one and a half percent. So that's a mixed day in Asia, a mixed day in the UK. And so far, it's a mixed day here in the US of A. So Michael, if you're ready, uh, Michael will give us a recap of everything that happened this morning in the live training room. And if Michael's not quite ready yet, then I will go ahead and drag up into the viewing area the concierge trade alerts from last night. And if you would like to grab a screenshot of those, you're welcome to do so. Okay. So last night, concierge trade alerts came out at 7 p.m. Eastern. Now, if you're wondering how to take a screenshot, 
I use the snipping tool. It's built into Windows 10. I'll just click new, position my mouse, hold down the left mouse button, drag it across, release the mouse button. Now, if I hover over the image, I can right click, I can send it if I wanted to, I can simply copy it to the clipboard to paste it somewhere else, or I could save it as a image in my pictures folder. Okay. Is that you I heard, Michael? Uh, yes, I am here. Okie doke. Well, if you're ready, we're ready for you. Okay. I am ready. Um, all right. Let me bring everything over here. And show my monitor. Okay. There we go. All right. So, for All no right, news day, we have you locked and loaded. It's all yours. Okay. Here we go. Um, let me get this part ready too. That and this. Okay. Here we go. Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Monday, the eleventh day of May. 2020. If you're going to read the spreadsheet, you got to read all the CFTC risk disclosures down at the bottom. Um, today, um, as I said, it's the 11th day of May 2020. We made 18 ticks in the euro, three ticks in crude, 10 ticks in gold, and four ticks in the ES. That put us at 292.5 on the morning session. Um, today it took 38 minutes and six trades to get to the goal for the day. At that point, we're up $108 contract, and we took a total of 10 trades. Now, if we scroll down to here, you will see, <laughs> you will see that we have uh, $1,960 a contract so far this month. That's over seven days, averaging $280 per contract per two hour day. If we go all the way down here, on the year now, we're at $32,295 a contract. That's over 85 days, averaging $379 per contract per two hour day. Okay, you got to keep that two hour day thing in mind. Okay. Um, now, what am I trying to get to? This right here. All right. If you have not taken a free trial with us, go to the home page at CFRN.net. In the right hand column, it says apply. CFRN.net. Got a new five day free trial. You can just go down to the big green button, click on the big green button, and it's going to bring you to this page eminitrainingschool.com. Okay. Now, if you go to eminitrainingschool.com, all we ask for on this page is your name your email, and your phone number. You can fill this out if you want to and hit the send button. Once you hit the send button, you'll be sent a confirmation link. You must click on the confirmation link. Um, yes, William. Um, okay. You just email me or text me or call me and we'll just set something up. Now on the gold, You know, there was some some pretty good opportunity here on the gold in the morning session, uh, starting out right here. There was a nice long opportunity right there. Okay, that would have gotten you the gold for the day right there. Um, you know, once we broke out of the chop, but it kept going into choppy spaces. You know, we had a shorting opportunity here. Um, we had one. there and there and not there uh, there was a short here it really didn't go too far and then along right there 
right? Another long right there. A short there. And you see how these are just not really, they're not really following through, right? And then we had a short over here that we took once we broke down below this level right here. And I grabbed it. But this was so fast. Um, you know, I I grabbed it and I got short and I locked in five ticks. You know, when I saw it went five ticks, I locked in five ticks, but it did all this right here in less than a minute. Okay. All the way over to here in less than a minute. And I locked in 10. And I was going to go lock in more, and then it just came right back up. And this is a 60, 62% retracement, 61.8% retracement right here. Um, and it just flew right back up there. And that's right about where my stop was at plus 10 ticks. And it took me out with plus 10. Um, that was the only trade I did on gold today. Okay. There were more. There was this one right here, and then we got into the break. And during the break, there were trades short here, short here, along here. So there were a few profitable trades during the break as well. Okay. Now, on the euro, we only did two trades. The first one right here, we picked up 12 ticks on. And the second one right here, we picked up six more. Um, there was a shorting opportunity right there. There was a momentum short. Would have been a break even if I had gotten into it. Um, and there was another short right here that I missed. Um, and then it just got choppy during the break. Okay, so crude oil now. On the crude, what did we get? We took three trades. Now we started out the trade the, the day with a bunch of break even trades. Um, that's why it took 30, 38 minutes today. Because we started out with all these break even trades. Um, okay. This was right at the open. There was a bounce off the BBC right here for a long. Then there was another right there. That wasn't a bounce off the BBC. And that would have been a trend line trade right there. And um, then it, it spun around and it. Started going short, and on the first trade right here, we picked up two ticks. Then on this one, we picked up one tick. We missed this one and picked up one tick on the follow up. And then it just got crazy sideways. You see all this? That's not really tradable. Um, even this. It's not something I would want to do. And then we get into the break. And during the break, there was one long trade right here. And one short trade. Well, the first short trade was right there. The second short trade was right there. Okay, so not a lot of opportunity. I mean, we had no news events today. Well, we broke through the weekly trading zone. Okay, you see right here, this area right here. 14, 15, that's a weekly trading zone. And we had been talking about it all morning and how it was going to try to get up there. And it finally did right at the end of the morning session. But as far as trades go this morning on the ES, we had a break even, a break even, um, plus four. And we missed that one. We missed that one. A break even. And then it finally got up to the weekly trading zone right at the end of the morning session at 11.30. And it chopped around in the zone for about 45 minutes. And it just started moving up onto there. Um, no trade set up there, though. And that was the morning session today um, okay so if you have not taken a free trial with us and you want to take a free trial with us 
go to the home page at CFRN.net. Right here it says free five day trial. Just click on that and you will be brought to this page where all we ask for is your name, your email, your phone number, and you can fill in this. Hit the send button and you'll be sent a confirmation link. You must click on that confirmation link. Okay, if you don't click the confirmation link, we don't know that you took the free trial. So you got to do that. Okay. Um, spreadsheet, one more time. If you're going to read the spreadsheet, you can read all the CFTC risk disclosures down at the bottom. Today is the 11th day of May, 2020. Um, today we were up 18 ticks in the euro, three ticks in crude, 10 ticks in gold, four ticks on the ES. Put us at plus 292.50 for the morning session. Uh, today took 38 minutes and six trades to get to the goal for the day. At that point, we're up $180 per contract. And we took a total of 10 trades this morning. So on the month now, we're up $1,960. That's over seven days, averaging $280 per contract per two-hour day. On the year now, we're up $32,295. That's over 85 days, averaging $379 per contract per two-hour day. Okay? And with that, we can pass it all back out to fabulous Phoenix, Arizona, Studio A, overlooking South Mountain. America's largest city park. Dwayne, if you are ready. Uh, yes, yes, I am ready. Okay, let me see if John made it in yet. Today is Monday. No, John did not make it in yet. This is a five minute chart, guys. I was just taking a quick look at. Um, yes, on the 30 minute, we were waiting. Uh, all morning for the price to pull up to the BVC, where we had the potential for good resistance. We had, let me just flip it over and show you. We had price pulling up to the BVC, which we expect to be good resistance until it isn't. This candle closed above the BBC, so never gave us a, any kind of a signal to go short. But also right here, I'll just go ahead and spill the beans. Uh, 29.14 slash 15 is a weekly trading zone. And so price just glided right through it like it's not even there. Now, there's potential resistance overhead right here. There's also potential resistance. right there, okay? So two spots where we look for the market to run into obstacles that might stop this bullish advance. And what, what did you say the, uh, what did you say the uh, recap of the recap was again? Oh, the recap of the recap was yeah, 38 minutes. Didn't uh, you didn't ask, it was 38 okay. minutes, six trades, $108 a contract. Um, Okie doke. And let's see if I have a recap here. I think Valerie might still be working on the recap. Just about there. Okie doke. Yeah, no rush. Take your time. <clears throat> and I already pulled up the uh, alerts from last night so that everybody could get a screenshot. All right, so last night, we were looking for, all right, here's the, right here, this candle is the Globex open. Okay, that's the Globex open and the alerts got out at, 7 p.m. Eastern, so that's going to be that candle right there during the life of this candle. And the alert said to consider being long 29.30. 
which is right there. Okay, I'm just going to pull these out of the way for a minute, get the screen. Now, again, these are two areas for potential resistance. Important prices, important areas are almost always tested. So on the initial trigger at 29.30, we made it up to 29.47. So that was a 17 point move. And I think Alexa's offline today. Alexa, 17 times 50. 17 times 50 is 850. Okay. $850 per contract trade. Then price got back below the trigger during the 2 a.m. Eastern candle. We triggered again. And we put in a swing high at 29.42. So that's 12 points. At $50 a point, that's $600 per contract traded. And then on the reverse side, <clears throat> consider being short 29.12. That happened. Right here. Okay. And from twenty nine twelve, we ran down to last week's weekly trading zone, and I just throw in that we also hit this week's weekly trading zone. Now, the weekly trading zones go out to all of the members, partners, passport holders, Monday morning, 6.15 a.m. Eastern. And then I just share the numbers with the entire CFRN audience, typically on Thursday. Uh, but throughout the week, I usually end up leaking a few of them out, as I just did. So we did not get a retrigger here on this one. Well, the initial drop really uh, took us down to 2907.75. So that's like four and a quarter points. Then we got back above the trigger and we dropped to the swing low of 2889.75. So we'll call that uh, 2890. So that's 22 points, 22 point move at $50 a point. That's $1,000 per contract traded. Bryce is really on a, on a chair here. I haven't seen any uh, headlines or presidential tweets or anything else that supports the move up. Uh, we did mention this morning in the live training room that the NQ uh, was heading north while all the other indices were heading south and they do tend to travel as a pack. One of them was right and one of them was wrong. Well, it would be the NQ that was on the right side of the street apparently because the others have now turned and are following as we approach this 2930. That's an important price, important area, but we've made a, a really strong move up. So as we approach this 2930, I would be cautious there, perhaps let it poke its head up above 2930 and then on a smaller time frame, as we teach, you know, a pullback to the BBC 
that holds would then give us the green light to stay with this long to the upside. We haven't gotten there yet though. We've got this first area for potential resistance. And this one, right? What's that one all about? Now it showed up on the five minute. There's potential resistance there, potential resistance there. And then again, there'll be potential there. But really, these types of signals be pretty good. So let's see what we got. 30 minutes, that bearish cross in the 30 minutes also lines up with that screen. So you've got a trigger, that potential resistance, which we're at right now. If we get up above the trigger, we run right into potential resistance, which could send price right back down for the trigger. But so far, for those who were trading with us live last night at the Globex Open, and we start each Sunday night at 6 p.m. Eastern, and we continue, I don't know, up until Fridays at 5 p.m. Eastern. Futures trade around the clock, unlike the stock market, which is open Monday through Friday from 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. Futures trade around the clock. So you're not forced to find your trade, find your opportunity. I don't know if it's just me, Dwayne, but your audio is getting really weak. Is it? Yeah. Well, I don't know what to do because everything is set as it should be. If you want to take over for a minute, I can reboot and see if that, if that fixes it. You want to do that? You know what? It might be me because my cord is all wound up and there's a break in it, so it might just be me. Oh no, okay, Tim says Tim says him as well. Okay, so you reboot and I will take over in just a minute. Okay. So you know when you're ready. Hang on, I'm waiting for this to go through. Okay. It did. All right. Here we go. Um I'll take the charts. Yeah, let me grab the charts and I'll take over and then, you know, while you're rebooting, John will probably show up too. Okay. Okay. Um, and then when I come back, guys, we'll, we'll finish with the, uh, with the recap and we'll help you. All right, so I'll be right back. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to go through trades like I do in the, in the, in the room in the morning. Okay. Um, Yeah, Val, that's fine. Um, you know, especially the one, the Ninja Turtle 8 video that I did that shows all the little the little tweaks you got to do to it when you load it up. That would be good to, to give to people. Um, okay. All right. So right now on the ES, we are headed toward another weekly trading zone. I'm not, not exactly sure where it is. Oops, <laughs> my order. I had to buy new tires for my truck. Um, hang on, let me go to my email. And then I will go here. Um, speaking of that, Valerie, you said somebody wanted to meet with me this afternoon. I now have a meeting. 
at 3 o'clock. Okay, I think he's good for a quick call at 1. Okay, all right, that's good. I, I, I texted you his number, thank you. You did, okay. Okay, so let me put my weekly trading zones on here. And we will see where to expect this to go. Now, let's flip it to a five minute so you can actually see them. Okay, well, this is the weekly trading zone that we just went through. Came from here, we got up to this one, the 1415. And the next one is all the way up here at 47.48, right at the high of the day. So, it could be that we're going to go up there right now. Um, no, I'm going to highlight that one too. Okay. Um, okay. So I've got a whole bunch of text messages coming in. Um, going back down here to the four tick range and on the four tick range, we just had a long opportunity right here. Now there's so much room between here and the next weekly trading zone that this could go either way. I mean, obviously right now it's, it's going up, but the cycle's starting to go down. So you gotta look, but you don't have to look. You can look over here and see where the BBC is. The BBC is jammed right in the middle of that weekly trading zone down there. And we're at a red YBR over here with bearish separation. So what's likely to happen right now is we're going to get a pretty deep pullback. You know, we had a long opportunity right here. Your stop would have gone to break even right there. You'd be out of break even right here on the four tick range. Now the cycle is going down too steep to consider long trades. So you just have to wait. Okay. Um, Joe, if I went long at 29.30, 29.30, I wouldn't have gone long at 29.30. Oh, you said 29.30, right? Yeah. I wouldn't have gone long at 29.30. Um, that may have been for Dwayne. Oh. Because he was talking CTAs. Oh, okay, on the concierge trade alerts. Okay, okay. I get it. Um, 2926, it would have been right here, 2926 and a half would have been your long, and your stop would have been eight ticks, and you would have gotten taken out right here because you closed above the MA1 right there, and it's pulled back. So you would have been taken out of break even right here. And now the cycle is going down too steep to consider long trades. So what's likely to happen here? This is just my opinion. We could retrace all the way back to this weekly trading zone right here. Because this was a pretty pretty fast move up out of there. But what's most likely to happen is you're going to retrace down here to the YBR. Okay. Because if you look at that, I mean, I'm just eyeballing it but that's about a 62% retracement. Um, let's just... You see over here? I, I did it the wrong way. Hang on. Let me do it the other way. Why is it going over there? There it goes. Okay, that's better. Well, I guess it's not quite that much. But 
it's likely to retrace all the way back down here. And then if it holds, you know, we'll have a leg up and reset the cycle. If it doesn't hold, then it's probably going to get down here. I'm back. Okay. Oh, you're back? Okay. Um, no. <laughs> Say something else. <laughs> no, I, uh, I don't know what else to do. Uh, everything's connected as it should be. Yeah, because you're kind of, it's fuzzy and it's fuzzy and it's not very loud. And it was fine to begin with. And then it just went fuzzy and not very loud. So I, I don't know. I got 200 megabits of internet speed. And the cables are plugged in just like they normally would be. <clears throat> I've got uh, oh, 183 download. Got 21. Nope, and I'm at 100%. Yeah, see, I, I can hear Valerie just fine. Yeah. So it's it's out there in Phoenix. Mm. And I think everybody can hear me just fine, too. Yeah, no, I, I hear you fine. Yeah, I don't, the beginning of the show, was it fine then? Yeah, it was. It was. So uh, what do we do? Do we cancel the show today? Or? Well... I mean, we don't have to. I mean, I can still hear you. It's just not. It's just not as good as it normally is. John is still not in. So every everything is is set up, you know, just like it always is. Hmm. Yeah, because it's sound check. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds, I mean, honestly, it sounds like you're mumbling. Like I'm talking like this, very quietly. And, you know, like me when I first get up in the morning. <laughs> and I'm like, I try to be, I try to be, you know, all upbeat. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> when I feel like, good morning, everybody. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> Test one, two, three. Yeah, it's still. Uh, yeah, it's still I, ran off. A, I ran an audio uh, check, the sound check. And... Yeah, I mean, and you're not going to know. <laughs> how can, yeah, there's, how there's, can you know how to fix it? Anything, really, not anything I can do uh, to fix it. I guess I'll just maybe like, try to talk louder. Yeah, get closer to your mic, maybe. Brad says I have a volume dial and I can hear you okay. Yeah, if you if you crank up the volume, but then every time somebody else speaks, like you know when I speak or Valerie or when John comes on or you know Dr. Tom or Garrett or anybody else comes on. Hopefully, well, hopefully this you know won't be permanent. Whatever, whatever the issue is. Yeah. Well, I just turned up my volume, and I can hear you better, you know, but, and I, I really, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't just me, because, you know, this microphone that I have right now is one of my old travel microphones, and it has a break in the cord, and it's right at the, right at the on-off button on the mic, on the microphone cord, and, you know, I know this I is got my mic, I plug it back in. Um, hang on. It sounds like it's getting better. So I unplugged the mic, plugged it back in. Mm. Anyway. Anyway. Well, I mean, you can go on if you want. Might as because, well. I mean... you know, we can't hear you. It's just not as loud as it used to be. It's not as crisp and clear as it normally is. Yeah, and the fact that I rebooted, I mean, it was just not as really nice. Okay. Um, yeah, I cranked up the volume too, and I can hear if you better with the volume. The gain, if I increase the gain, there it is, right there. There it is, right there, Dwayne. Yeah, I know, but that's—I think that's too loud. 
No, that's normal. That's, that's uh, doesn't sound normal to me. But if that sounds better to you guys, I'll leave it there. Oh yeah, yeah, that's that is much better. Right yes, now. that's good. Okay, all right, I'll leave it there. That it sounds odd to me, so I'll just I'll have to get used to hearing it. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll turn my volume down. Test, 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 so that it sounds normal to me. Now, does it still sound loud enough to you? Yep. All right, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Well, glad we worked that out. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad we okay. did too. All right, let me get uh, Telegram open again. And let me see, are we streaming on all platforms? No, let me fix that. Okay, so there goes YouTube. There was I a problem communicating with right YouTube. Now. Huh? I said I have the charts right now. Just Yeah, I know. Uh, okay, so there's an issue with YouTube at the moment, it says. <clears throat> so I'll just continue on. I'll take the charts. Okay, you got my charts? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay, and I got a phone call I got to make. Yeah, go ahead. We got it. Okay. All right. We'll see you. And we got our connection. YouTube, I think. And we'll just leave it on YouTube for today. If it can connect, it's trying. All right, so let me give you uh, the recap of what's happened so far with Logic 247 since the open last night. Again, we start Sunday night, 6 p.m. Eastern. And Okay, week 93, as of 12.34 p.m. Eastern today, we've had 25 total alerts since 6 p.m. Eastern last night. That's, that's a lot. I mean, there have been weeks when we only had 35, 40, 50 alerts uh, the entire week. So out of the 25, eight, we're still waiting on a resolution. 17 were actionable and we don't have anything that stopped out as of yet but it's early in the week on any typical average week we average about 20 percent of actionable alerts being stopped out okay so back to the s p where we left off Last night's alert, and I'll just drag them up there one more time in case anybody didn't get a screenshot. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Said to be long, 29.30, had a 17 point move. And I had said that this got back below the trigger but uh, as I look at it now uh, I was I obviously didn't see that straight we did not have a second trigger now I just gave you the statistics for the logic 247 alerts those are the ones that are based on current price action those are the ones that come out around the clock as opportunity presents itself that's the criteria for a logic alert as opportunity presents itself. Concierge trade alerts, which I just gave you a screenshot of, those are based on historical price action. Those numbers are published at the beginning of each Globex session, shortly thereafter, shortly after the open. And then those numbers are good for the entire session. And we do anticipate that those alerts will be triggered 
more than once, which is why my eyes deceived me and I thought that I saw a second trigger here, but we didn't. We had one trigger on the long side, 17 points, one trigger on the short side, 22 points. Moving on to the Dow, okay. Let's open that up. Okay, the Globex open right here, and the alert for the Dow was to be long. 24, 340. 24, 340. And we put in a swing high at 471. So from 430 to 470, is that 40 points at $5 a point? It's $200 for contract traded. And then here we triggered a second time. We put in a swing high up at 24424. Wait a minute. Let me see if it didn't look right here. It's 24. 340. Aha. Uh -huh. So from 24, 340, we went to 470. So that's 130 points. Alexa, 130 times five. 130 times five is 650. Okay. So that was a $650 per contract move. I thought something didn't seem right. Now, on this initial trigger, we were riding the back of blue and climbing. Okay, that's bullish. That supports a long trade. We got back below the trigger here and we pulled back to one of last week's weekly trading zones. And we triggered again, but this time we have to be a little cautious because overhead we have red and falling. And red and falling represents potential resistance. And as you can see, that's what happened. I mean, from 340, we did put in a swing high at 420. So that's an 80 point move at $5 a point, $400 per contract traded. But again, resistance sent us back down through the trigger. The short side for the Dow was 24135. 24135. Okay. So two, four, one, three, five. Thank you. Two, four, one, three, five. And the swing low. Ah, uh, we'll call it twenty-four thousand. So there'd be one hundred and thirty-five points. Alexa. 135 times five. 135 times five is 675. So $675 per contract move to the downside. And we have the potential here for another trigger. Now, just like up here on this initial trigger, we were riding right the back of blue and climbing. But on this trigger, we ran into red and falling resistance. If we trigger again, we're going to run into blue and climbing, which represents support. Here we had red and falling in our favor. So if we trigger again here, you have to anticipate that as price drops to blue and climbing, that we'll find potentially good support. Okay, the Russell. Last night on the Russell, consider being long 
and the swing high was 1341. So from 33 to 41, that's eight points at $50 a point. That's $400 per contract traded. If you have any questions on anything, put them in the chat box. And then on the short side for the Russell, instead of being short, 1311. Okay, and so from 1311, well, the first trigger, uh, we dropped to 1299. So we'll call that 11 points at $50 a point. That's $550 per contract traded. Price got back above the trigger, triggered again. And from 13.11, we dropped to 1297.3, we'll call that 98. So that would be 13 points at $50 per point. And we actually had a second trigger over here on the Russell, but it's the same thing that we saw on the other markets. On the long, we had the support of blue and climbing. Here, as we trigger long, we run into red and falling. And you can see what happened, okay? That's not unusual. That's exactly what we would expect, what we would anticipate. That's the market doing what the market does. Okay, next in Q. Now the NQ is the one <clears throat> bucking the trend. As the other markets were falling, the NQ was climbing. Now they've all tried to put together a rally. Last night, the Globex Open was right here. And the alert on the NQ was to be long 9220. 9220. Swing high 9285. So that's a 65 point move. at $20 a point. Alexa, 65 times 20. Alexa, 65 times 20. 65 times 20 is 1,300. Okay, so $1,300 for contract move. And pull this on across. We triggered a second time from ninety nine twenty up to ninety two eighty eight. No, we'll just call it sixty points. Or it's really a sixty another sixty five point move. So we had thirteen hundred once. 1300 twice. Now, <clears throat> what's required to actually put one of these alerts to work? Well, you got to be at your computer, got to have your charts open, you have to understand how to operate the DOM or you can trade directly from the chart. So in other words, you have to understand the mechanics of putting on and taking off a trade. And then if it's a alert, an alert to go long, well, then you go long. And if it's an alert to be short, you go short. On this trigger, we had the support of blue and climbing. 
And on this trigger, we had the support of blue and climbing. The short side for the NQ, that trigger was 91.72. And not only did all of our members get these alerts last night, as they do every night, everyone on the trial. If you're on the trial, or if you're brand new with us, it's very important that you trade in SIM until you prove yourself consistently profitable. It's really important. No reason. And it's not just our methodology or our strategy or our indicators, but any strategy, any methodology. You need to first prove yourself consistently profitable in the simulator before you go live. Otherwise, you're just throwing your money at the market, hoping something will stick. And Ask anyone who's ever blown up an account, which is most traders, and they'll tell you that it doesn't stick. Some people will try to tell you that, oh, trading in sim, that's just a waste of time because it's not real. Well, it's as real as it gets. The only difference is you don't lose real money as you're learning. It's a process. It's a journey. Now, we've worked hard for 15 years to make it as simple as we possibly can. Trading's not easy, never has been, never will be, but it can be simple. If you show up for class every day, if you ask questions, if you make sure that you understand everything, and then the idea is to put together 10 consecutive days in a row in the simulator where you reach your goal in 10 trades or less, then the blueprint gives you the green light to go live with one contract. Once you go live with one contract, then the goal is to increase your account balance by $2,000. Once you do that, then you get the green light to add a second contract. Now, adding the second contract, that's an important day because the first contract, you had to add that with your savings, money under the mattress, wherever you get your money. But, this, but if you follow the blueprint, adding the second contract, that's done with profit you actually earned in the market. That's a real good sign that you're on the right path to build a profitable trading business. If you sidestep any of the principles of the blueprint or skip any steps, chances are it'll come back to haunt you. So as tempting as it is, resist the urge and follow the path that many who've come before you followed, okay? You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to figure out anything new. Just learn to do what many others are doing. And that's learning the methodology, learning the strategy, using the indicators, exercising patience, discipline, all those things. Okay. So from 91.72, we dropped... 91, 18, so let's call it 70 and 20. That's a 50 point move at $20 a point, $1,000 per contract traded. You know, once you've earned the right to trade five contracts or 10 contracts, you can do the math. But it's important that you build the number of contracts that you trade first, you earn the right to go live. Then you earn the right to add your second contract. And then you earn the right to trade number three, number four, number five. And there's never any pressure. You know, there's no obligation to increase the number of contracts that you're trading. 
the blueprint will let you know when you've reached the point where if you want to add number three or you want to add number four, you've qualified based upon your own performance. And there's no better metric. It's not what somebody else can do with a methodology or what somebody else can do with a strategy. <clears throat> it's what you can do with a strategy. That's important to remember. Measuring yourself against other people and their success or failure, never a good idea. Make it personal, okay? Now, I spoke with John <clears throat> yesterday and he was going to join us today. So let me see if he had another system failure. I'll be right back. Well, guys, I got bad news. Uh, John is not well again. Uh, so he's back on uh, some kind of medication, some kind of antibiotics. So keep him in your prayers. Father, we just pray for John right now that whatever this virus is, whatever this thing that's plaguing him is, Lord, we just pray that, that you would touch him, that he would be healed in his body. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so we've covered the S&P, the Dow, the Russell, the NQ. Here's crude. And crude. The open last night was right here, this candle. And the alert on crude was to be long 2635. And that happened here. And the swing high was 73. So that's a $350 per contract move. And price got back below the trigger, tried to trigger again right there. It put in a swing high at 26.37. And then it dipped. And then again, it tried to trigger this time, made it up to 26.43. And the short side for crude was 25, 25. And that happened right, right here. And we put in a swing low at 25.05. So that's 20 ticks at $10 a tick. It's $200 per contract trade. Joe, you had a question earlier. I don't know if it ever got answered. Uh, something about four ticks. We asked that question, I'll <clears throat> be sure and answer it for you. On gold, 
considering short 1702. Swing low of that candle, 1702, right on the nose. Price bounced back up to the VVC where it found good resistance. We sent it back down through the trigger. And we put in a swing low at 1695.20. So if we call it 1696, then that would be a $600 per contract move. And then price got back above the trigger, triggered again. Well, actually, it triggered again right here. It dropped uh, $300 per contract. And then it got back above the trigger. And this time it dropped to 1692. So that's, well, it actually dropped to 1692.1. So we'll call that a $900 per contract move. So in the S&P, I want to point out that it's very difficult to get out at a swing high or swing low because you don't know that it's a swing high or swing low until after the fact. On an extended move, we have what's called an exit signal and that's what we see right here the step line <clears throat> on a move this on a on an up move the step line will typically be on the left side of blue and climbing as it gets to the right side of blue and climbing that tends to tell you that the market is or the move is running out of steam so what we look for in a situation like this is the first red candle that closes below the step line. Closing price of that candle was 29.41 and a quarter. 29.41.25. Exit signal. So if we take 2941 minus 2930, that becomes 11 points at $50 a point. That's $550 per contract traded. So the exit signal, it can't get you out at the swing high or swing low, again, because no one knows it's the swing high or swing low. The actual move ran 17 points, but then the signal that the move is running out of steam and that it's best to exit 29.41 and a quarter. On the way down, <clears throat> we look for the same thing. Price is on the left side of red and falling, and it crosses to the other side. Once the step line has crossed to the other side of red and falling, in this case, what we're looking for is the first green candle that closes above the step line. So the closing price of this candle was 2,900 and a quarter. So from 2912 to 2900, that would be 12 points. But there was a tick in there, so we'll just call it 11. So interestingly, that is also $550. $550 at the exit signal.
Now, if we look at the Dow, we'll see that we also got an exit signal on the Dow at 24423. And then on the short side, the exit signal came with this candle at 24030. On the Russell, thirteen thirty six, and then on the short side, thirteen oh six seventy, on crude, we didn't get an extended move. And what was the short side on crude 2525? Yeah, neither one of those were an extended enough of a move to even give an exit signal. And the same is really true for gold. Just didn't, didn't it wasn't enough of a move for the exit signal to kick in the gear. The NQ, the exit signal was. 92.69.50 on the long side. On the short side, 91.57. That's the exit to short, then triggered right back into this long. And so far on this long trade, uh, there's no exit signal in sight. So remember, what has to happen is number one. Blue and climbing needs to catch up with price. This has been a pretty brisk move. Took out that previous swing high. So as blue and climbing catches up with price, we'll look for the step line to cross over blue and climbing. And then we'll be looking for a the first red candle that closes below the step line. Like that right there. Doke. And with that covers it. That covers the concierge, covers the logic. I'll scroll through the logic here, show you what that looks like. Okay, here we go. Last week, week 92, we had a total of 78 alerts. 13 never trigger. We had 65 actionable alerts. Three of those were stopped out, which represented 5% of the actionable alerts. That's a low number on average. We average about 20% of actionable alerts being stopped out on any given week. And then here's week 93, which began last night, 6 p.m. Eastern. The time you see here is Pacific. I'm in Phoenix and eight months out of the year we're on Pacific time because Arizona doesn't do daylight savings time. So the first trade coming out of the gate was to be long the S&P, long the Dow, long the Russell, the NQ, and then there was a short on gold, a long on crude, a short on crude. And then I made a mistake, I duplicated one. This is one of the ones we're still waiting on, waiting on, waiting on. This was a short on gold. This was a long on the ES. Waiting, waiting long on the Russell, long on the Dow, long on the ES, long on the NQ, waiting, long on the Russell, long on gold, long on the NQ, waiting. And we've made it to the first target and waiting. So all of that has happened since the markets opened 
6 p.m. Eastern last night. Now, these are the logic alerts. I just went through the concierge trade alerts one by one. The concierge trade alerts are based on previous price action. The logic 247 alerts are based on current price action. When you have both of those pointing at the same important area, that is when you definitely want to slow down, go to your chart, take an up close look because you've got current price action and historic price action both telling you that you're at an important price, important area, and that typically leads to a good opportunity. If you missed the live training room on Friday, go to youtube.com slash CFRN. There you'll find a video of the live training room from Friday. Michael did the first half uh, as he normally does every day. <clears throat> and then I came in uh, the second hour and we just simply walked through uh, some of the things that I look at on the larger time frame as I'm creating the alerts and managing the alerts and, and all of that stuff. So uh, if you didn't catch that, you might find it informative. You might even find it entertaining, but check it out youtube.com slash CFRN. And while you're there, click the subscribe button and the little bell, because the more subscribers we have, the more people find us, and that's a good thing. So we wanna help everybody out there who wants help. So you can help us and help them by subscribing, it's free. And then when you click the little bell, what that does is it notifies you anytime I put out a new video. Okay, we get a little pop-up. All right, let's go to our good word for the day. To all the mothers in the audience, I do hope you had a nice Mother's Day yesterday. Today we're going to talk about our attitude. Sometimes we need an attitude adjustment. Philippians 4.8, don't ever stop thinking about what is truly worthwhile and worthy of praise. We all need an attitude adjustment from time to time. It's crucial to maintain the right attitude when the going gets rough. No matter what happens in your life, determine to go through it with the right attitude. In fact, determine beforehand to keep a positive mindset in the midst of every negative situation that arises. If you make this a conscious decision and meditate on it during the good times, when difficulties arise, you'll already be prepared. Paul writes in Philippians 4, 8, keep your minds on whatever is true, pure, right, holy, friendly, and proper. Don't ever stop thinking about what is truly worthwhile and worthy of praise. And God who gives peace will be with you. Some of the greatest writers and composers in history created their greatest masterpieces during the worst times of their lives. Beethoven's most famous symphonies were written when he was almost totally deaf and experiencing great sorrow. One of the biggest mistakes you can make is to think, I could never be like those people. If you think like that, 
you'll be defeated before you even try. Maintaining a right attitude is always much easier than regaining a right attitude. So as soon as you sense yourself becoming negative, make an immediate attitude adjustment. The Bible says in James 4, 7, resist the enemy and he will flee from you. The moment the enemy sends negative thoughts into your mind, stop them midstream. Discipline yourself to stand strong with a positive attitude in every circumstance. When you do, God, who gives peace, will be with you. And that's our good word for the day. If you have never taken our free trial, you can do that by going to eminitrainingschool.com. You get two free trials per lifetime, one every six months. So if you've never taken advantage of your trial, go to eminitrainingschool.com. What you'll get is five days in our live training room from 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m., Monday through Friday. You'll also be able to use our platform, our indicators. You'll be able to participate in the discussion group in Telegram. You'll have access to the alert channel You'll receive both the concierge trade alerts and the Logic 247 alerts. And you can even book a free one-on-one -on -one mentoring session while you're on the trial. So that's a lot. And again, it's free. No credit card required. Just go to eminitrainingschool.com and do keep John in your prayers. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Whoever you are, wherever you are, may God continue to richly bless you with his mercy and with his grace. And I'll see you at the bell. Remember this, there is no greater return on investment than to see a human life changed and given hope. As always, pray hard and trade safe. Any financial information discussed on this show is simply the opinion of our host, Dwayne Reeves, his co-hosts and guests. To learn more about trading e-mini futures or to take a one-week free trial in our live trading room, call 1-866-928-3310. 866-928-3310. Information discussed on this radio program should not be construed as a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Always do your own due diligence and consult with a licensed securities broker or financial planner before making any investment decision.